and we've got another distressing video which a distressing video but also another indication for me personally of what actually happens in real life um you know there's a lot of posturing and you know uh virtue signaling online when it comes to um, societal issues social justice issues political issues but in the actual day-to-day -day runnings of life, you get to see how people actually conduct themselves and what they actually do in the face of adversity or what they actually do when somebody needs their help, right? Or what they actually do when somebody's in pain, when somebody's distressed, whatever it may be. And this is a good indication that most people are full of shit. Most people are full of complete shit. Now, of course, the uptick in violence against Asians in the US could be blamed on many different things. It's that, you know, there's people out there that can even argue with the fact that, you know, is this violence that we're seeing really being directed at people from an Asian descent? Or is it just a symptom of the times we're living in um, during the pandemic? The fact that Asians are being assaulted in metropolitan cities where they mostly live is no, it's just a coincidence. Blah, blah, blah. Who knows, right? But regardless, we are seeing a lot more videos on our social media feed of very frail, very old, sometimes very young Asian people who are getting assaulted on the streets by various different people. Um, it's obviously something that's occurring. So with that being said, it's obviously in everyone's, you know, zeitgeist. It's, it's in our, it's in our, it's in our mind sphere. We're thinking about it at the moment. So you would be remiss to think if you were on the street and you happen to see a frail old Asian lady somewhere getting pushed around by some dude, you would probably be you would probably feel it. You, it's your duty to maybe step in and maybe not stop the whole thing. Maybe not kind of physically kind of insert yourself in there, but maybe shout from a distance and let that person know that, hey, what you're doing isn't cool. Alert them in some way in hope that they maybe stop so that the old lady can get up and move away. Whatever. You'd want to do something. You'd imagine so, right? But that's not what actually happens. What actually happens most of the time is that when people get involved in physical altercations, especially when it doesn't involve them and they're just seeing other people getting involved in it and it's something that's where, you know, it's not, not their business, they tend to turn a blind eye because people re rarely, if ever, want to get involved when things actually, when people actually need help, but they'd much rather just retweet something, share a post, than actually insert themselves in a situation that might get them hurt. That's the facts of the matter and it's really distressing to see, but this video kind of proves it. The Department of Justice launching a new effort to track, investigate, and prosecute hate crime offenders. The White House creating a task force to try to, to fight the rise in violence against Asians during the pandemic. And the FBI holding nationwide trainings to recognize and report anti-Asian bias. Few cities have been spared the violence, but data shows spikes in Boston, Philly, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Phoenix, and the worst of it all in New York from three Asian hate crimes in 2019 to 28 last year and Jesus already Christ. 33 this year. We're about to show the latest attack, but a warning to you now, it is difficult to watch. Police say a 65-year-old woman was walking to church Jesus when a man Christ. punched and kicked her while shouting anti-Asian slurs. This is Midtown Manhattan. Holy you shit. can see the attacker stomping on the woman's upper body and head three times after she fell onto the sidewalk. A security guard watched the whole time, and then more show up. None stopped the attacker, not one. No one helped the woman. One even appeared to close the door on her. Crazy, right? And in reality, that's actually the truth of what actually happens in the real world. Most people don't care. Most people don't want to get involved. Most people want to pretend like whatever's happening in front of them isn't actually happening. They don't want to face the reality of the situation that's going on. And the distressing part of it is, more often than not, the people who are watching are from the very same community that person's from, um, have people that they know from that community. So it's not as if, like, you know, they're that distant from you that you kind of feel like they're not something you want to get involved in. No, the minority experience with living in a city, especially a metropolitan city like New York, is probably the same for all minorities. It's a rat race. You're all in the shit. You're all having to scrape and scrap for whatever else that you can get to make sure you put food on the table and keep a roof over your head. So there should be this weird kind of underlying kinship that exists amongst you all. You might hate each other at the best of times, but in the worst of times, you've got each other's back. But no, in reality, that doesn't happen. 
that's why sometimes I get annoyed when I see people sharing things and posting stuff on social because that's easy to do. The hard thing to do is this. The hard thing to do is to, is to go out there and confront a black dude that looks like he's 250 pounds, right? He looks like he's, you know, he's physically able to maybe give you a bit of a beating and tell him to let go or leave that old lady alone. That's a difficult thing to do because you might end up getting yourself hurt. You might end up making the situation worse. But what would you rather do? Stand there like a coward and not do anything? And then again, a topic again, talk about, let's talk about the security guards. The distressing part about the security guards are, is that more likely than not, they are migrants or they're from a minority community themselves, whether they're black, Hispanic, whatever they are, or maybe even Asian, they're of a minority community themselves. They probably got that job to support their own family. It's maybe one of their second jobs. It's a job that's actually providing them with the ability to keep the lights on in their house. So through this public outrage, through people like myself making videos, more attention is going to be brought to this video. People are going to be chastising them. And eventually, guess what will happen? Because people love to do the social justice thing online. They'll end up getting fired. They'll lose their jobs. And their families will be desolate because there will be no option and possibility for them to keep the lights on because daddy lost his job because he didn't want to get involved with something that he, in his right to, to be honest, because I still think it's cowardly. I would have got involved myself. But I'm sure the rules would stipulate if you're a security guard for a hotel, whether that is, or a, 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 a residential building, whatever that may be, I'm pretty sure the rules are you can't actually go outside and sort of like enforce your will or do your job. Your job only kind of limits you to that door, which is why I think American uh, people, when they shoplift, run, right? Because usually um, security guards can't chase you, whereas in the UK they can. Well, they shouldn't, but in the UK, they do chase you down the street. But in America, you don't really see them chasing you through the car park. As soon as you kind of leave the building sort of thing, they sort of kind of let you go. So in there, I would imagine by law, they're probably right in their own regards, right? They're probably in, within their rights to stay in that door and not make a move. But surely if you saw a 65-year-old Asian lady walking home, carrying her bags, minding her business, getting kicked repeatedly in the head, of course, okay, forget if you saw them having a tussle and you thought okay you don't know who the guy is that could be her son i don't know you don't know what's going on there but from time you see a guy kicking a 65 year old woman in the head repeatedly you know five feet away from you you can't say nothing you can't say anything you can't even just like shout just to, just to kind of startle them a little bit nothing you just stand there and then you go up to the door and you close the door and again, like I said, the tragic thing about it is, is I'm pretty sure that these security guards are minorities. And if they're not minorities, that job is a very crucial part of their income stream. It's a very crucial part of allowing them the ability to support their family or themselves. And now that job is going to go because they weren't brave enough to step out outside and defend somebody who is defenseless. That's the disgusting part of it. And all these people saying, stop Asian hate, all this sort of malarkey, save your post. Because if somebody's actually getting beaten up outside on the street and you happen to be going home somewhere or you're not dressed the right way or you feel as if that guy is a bit too big, you're going to walk away and turn a blind eye because most people are cowards. That's the really annoying part. That's what gets my real bee under my bonnet. Most people are cowards and they would rather do the easy thing like retweet, leave a comment somewhere on the post than actually go out there and confront these bigots confront these vile humans that decide that it's within their remit to go out there and you know beat up every asian person they stay see because they blame them for the pandemic disgusting absolutely disgusting but again am i surprised hell no hell hell no